The middle of the back can either make or break what you're doing, because it can either be this beautiful last veil that once you style it, it's all over everything, or if you dry it out and there's a line, you're going to have to work through that. So I see a lot of times, you know, people will ask questions like, you know, how do you hold your brush? My only answer is never horizontally, unless you're saturating the bottom. If you approach the hair like this, it's going to look like this. If you approach it vertically, diagonally, then you're moving with that same kind of consistent dimension, and you're not going to get harsh lines at all. It's also much easier to blend that way than it is that way. So don't think of it like feathering lightener on a foil. Think of it as just completely patting it down, working into the hair, so that way you don't have any bleeds. Hey, Harriet. Yes, ma'am. How many sessions do you think uh, you do for your customers on an average, like for, to get a volume, a, a really nice volume? So it depends. Um, I, I give a really nice volume as the first session, as long as you aren't jet black and you don't mind a little warmth. <laughs> so it just depends. But I would like to see everybody for at least two to three sessions. Not everybody's looking to go from dark to light, but most people are looking for more dimension than you can achieve in one service easily. That's why I recommend building on it and switching up your method. So if you applied her the first time using the zigzags, next time apply her horizontally. And you're going to have a different pattern. You're going to have more variety. And I think that in my area, that's kind of really been an advantage for me because people will be like, nobody can do it the way that you do it. What are you doing? And I say a different thing every time. You're welcome. Like, we're constantly evolving and constantly adding more foils in one area or right. do something else, you know, so that we have a lot of options and so that they don't get bored with it. And so when they go see their friends and family and say, hey, I just got balayage, people aren't like, well, what's, well, why'd you do that? It looks the same. So, yeah. One good thing about having nails is that they can help you section. So, <laughs> I'm moving around to her other front side right now. Oh, hello. That's, this is the hair on the brush that I was talking about. This almost went in her eye. So... <laughs> It does really help to have a clean brush. That's how you have a couple brushes? Is that yeah, what I normally have a couple brushes. I, I don't know if you've seen those photos where it's like some stylists and they have a beautiful clean brush with like a little tiny bit on the end and there's like a messy brush that's crazy. I am both stylists at the end of that application. So it just depends and I do different things in different places. But again, I'm over directing towards the front a little bit with this front section, painting it up to about her temple. If you get um, like a, a bundle of lightener that isn't where it should be, go ahead and pick it back up with either the tail of your comb or the edge of your brush, and then just continue blending it in. Harriet, do you ever do two colors at the same time? I do, yes. Um, I will use a high lift and bleach at the same time, sure. actually, depending. Um, so I'll do, I'll do maybe like a partial <laughs> highlight, and then I will um, use a high lift to balayage in between and people love the heck out of that. So I really do recommend using more than one product um, to really put in that dimension, especially if you're gonna have large um, sessions, you know, large, uh, you're gonna have repeated sessions with them. There we go. Let me keep this towel over here too. Hey, it. Mm -hmm. My daughter kind of would like to have some, some, some <coughs> subtle color in the balayage look. Uh -huh. Um, how do, would I just use energy cream to thicken up my color so it wouldn't run? You can do that. Um, I really prefer, so energy cream is technically, are you talking about the additive, the gel additive, or energy cream, the developer? The energy cream additive. Got it, okay. To make it thicker. Got it, got it. You can add that. Um, however, I don't usually balayage with lightener or, or with color. I still prefer to do that in foil. Mm -hmm. So kind of what I was saying with like a slice, you can go through and you can just quickly slice and color and then let it go and then put your next one on top. And as long as you aren't completely saturating the bottom of that previous section with lightener, it's not going to mix and it's not going to have any transfer. Um, but what if she just wanted all color, not bleach? Oh, well then, yeah, you would do it with color. You could definitely do it with color. I norm I almost always have people go Should with I it. use foils with it? Just do a foliage? You can use whatever you like. I do more partial highlights and balayage than I ever do foliage. So I'll use foils to help incubate the heat. But to me, teasing and then putting in the foil, it's, it's like the most, it's the worst of both worlds to well, me. I was so. tease. No. Yeah, okay, good, good. But when most people mean foliage, they're meaning, you know, they take the section, they tease it, as far as what I've heard, they mm -hmm. tease it up to the root and then they apply like that. How are you doing the foliage? I just weave it and just foil, foil it. Oh, okay. And, and control where I put it in the foil. Okay, yeah, yeah, gotcha. On the strands. Okay, um, I sometimes do that, um, but I, I wouldn't use a foil but for I that. I haven't ever done it with color. I just 
You could, you could definitely do it with color. Um, I would recommend something called an MB Mesh for something like that. I don't know if you guys are familiar with those kind of plasticky foam. Yeah, whoever came up with this is a genius because I swear it's just manufacturing package material. But anyways, it's like these little clear foam strips. You can get them in boxes of 50. There's a company called MB Mesh, and then you can also get from Mar, I believe. They have some, and I bought three boxes of that, and I keep them in like a Tupperware thing at the salon. They're reusable, so you can just slide them right out, throw them in the sink, give them a good rinse and shampoo, and then put them back so you're not throwing the foils away. But because they're so stiff, they're a little stiffer than a foil, um, it's like painting more, it's, it's like half of a board, I guess, in a way. So I like that surface, and then you can slap another one on, and then at the end of it, she looks like she's got a whole magazine you know, around her. But I like what that does materially. I think versus foil and also it's something new for them so when you're saying oh we're doing a balayage you want them to know that it's not just a, a slight variation on a traditional technique people are googling they're looking at photos on Instagram they're looking at what they think a balayage should look like when it's being applied so it's it, you know some people are like well I don't think she did it right she did it in foil I've had corrections that were not bad but because the person was not confident in their first person's um, you know uh, application then it became a bigger deal so I have some more photos that we could show. Barry, I, I, I don't know if I heard you say this or not, but I want to say to Kitty, too, um, one of the things I use, and I think they sell it at the office, that's where I got it, is the plastic. Um, it's the... Paper. Like black paper. No, it's, uh -huh. it's, it's like cellophane. It's cellophane. I've had that. Yeah. yeah. And so I'll usually use that when I'm doing the darker with the balayette, like she's doing with the blonde. If I'm putting dark on, I'll put leave that and over the dark, and then see my blonde. So I do use I do use film sometimes. I have the biodegradable stuff. Yeah, uh, it looks like saran wrap. Yeah, <laughs> I do use that sometimes. But because I am more focused on applying everything quickly, I will apply everything quickly and then place saran wrap over the whole head or in between maybe every other three sections. Because if you're bumping your developer as you move with your application, it's taking you a long time. You shouldn't really need to um, kind of incubate as you go. Okay. I kind of, you don't ever want to cap them, but I will definitely just lay a nice layer of the saran wrap and I'll tuck it under the first sections and maybe underneath the bottom of the back so they you know, look like a little crazy, but it's not something I have to worry about when you're moving through. Because I used to keep it on a, like a paper towel roll and then it was just such a pain it's a to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's very annoying. Like it. So yeah. kind of as like a last step, it's much easier to just lift those sections up, yeah. see how they're Processing, see if you maybe got a spot you need to reapply, and then place, and then go up, and then see what you're doing, and then place. And then overall, once everything's perfect, you're fine, and you can just cook till you're done. Oh, I got to put my password in, sorry. The password is so long, so it's, <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly a secret. Um, I'm going to keep moving throughout here. I have some pictures of hair. Go ahead and go to the next slide for me. So these are combination of highlight and balayage, and that is the same girl. That's one of my best friends, Kaylee. She has the prettiest hair I've ever had my hands in in my life, and I'm so happy that she comes to see me. But um, those last two photos were a year apart. And, oh, wow. Yeah, and so she um, comes in like every four to six months, and whenever she does, we do a full highlight and a full balayage. So we do everything in between. So if people are bringing you pictures that look like that one, let them know right off the bat. That is, first of all, not achievable in one session with balayage, and you're going, it's, going to, um, it, it's going to be a much bigger ticket than they're just thinking, really, because I, she's, uh, I'm not sure, probably about 350. I don't remember exactly. But for that much work, for her to be there for that long, for me to use very many things, that's kind of where she's at. That second one was less. I think that was closer to 200 because we did a partial balayage and a full highlight. So I like having the, you know, the, the three varieties and the three levels of each service um, because I think it gives people, they understand that the price is in accordance with what they want. So if you want a little blonde, it starts at 65. If you want a lot of blonde, upwards of 300. So it just really, you can give somebody like the ability to baby step into it or if they bring you a picture like this, let them know it's going to be a whole day transformation twice. Perfect. Okay, so these are also um, full highlights and full balayage. Um, this one, this is a really good example of when you'll need to color melt. So she has a natural level three, and she had level three color throughout here. Very upsetting, because <laughs> she didn't tell me, and I asked her, and then I'm going through it, and I was like, why are you orange? So I had to reapply up just through that part 
um, with the higher volume and then meet the lower volume on the, on the bottom. So I'll balayage one section with two developers if I need to. I don't recommend doing that if they've been super previously lightened because obviously the overlap, you're maybe playing a little risky in there. But um, so that allowed her to lift to, I would say about an eight evenly. If I had not lifted back up and checked, it would have been too late and she would have only lifted to about a six. So that, both of those are scenarios in which I would need to color mount, but I was able to color mount with 7AA and a little bit of 8A with a little of the AA in it. So that's what her tone is right there. What um, was your third color you said? A little of what? It was uh, 7A uh, with a little bit of um, 8AA. Yeah. <coughs> and then that on the right is going to be basically 9G. Um, I work a lot with the concentrates. I don't buy as many of the pre-formulated colors because I just like being a crazy mad scientist and mixing it all up myself. And plus, and they know it's custom and they like to watch me do it and they're like, how do you know how much? And I'm like, well, you can't see the scale, but you know, there's, I think it's a fun uh, thing that we can do as professionals to kind of just let them know like, hey, you know, not only are we hand painting this in a way that nobody else will ever be able to replicate, we are customizing your formula, customizing every aspect of the scenario and the service so that you feel seen and you feel like we are bringing out that best version of you. A lot of what girls want, and not just colorize, I, we all want to look like that Disney princess. We all want to look like you just woke up with, you know, butterflies flying around you and <laughs> all sorts of stuff like that. And I, I think that um, the, the golden tones and a lot of things like that kind of give you that realistic blonde. I do get a lot of requests for ash and I will sometimes turn them down. I'll be like, listen, yeah, it's trendy. You have so much pink in your skin. Please don't make me do this to you. Like, let's look at some swatches. Let's look at some other inspiration pictures in a lighter blonde and steer you a different direction. When clients want to be toned like a, a warm result after their first session, I'm like, thank you. You're realistic. Some people are not, and I let them know that if we have to do, if we have to relighten, it's, it's you know, they're going to be paying more, and to baby step it is much better than to get what you wanted or what you thought you wanted in just one session. Because then you're looking at like a corrective color amount of work, essentially, to kind of just take them from point A to point Z, as opposed to just being able to take a couple steps at a time and move forward. Any questions? I'll finish your application when we're talking. Any questions, anybody? Great. All right, let's give Harriet <laughs> Oh, if anybody wants to come up and kind of touch and see what I'm doing, feel free to. Um, if you have any questions, I'm just going to go ahead and finish this up real quick. Period. Yes, ma'am. This ma is um, a question. I kind of I do something specific, but I want to see how you handle when a client comes in, a gal comes in. How do you explain to them what it's going to cost them to get their that service done? I have all of my things a la carte, so I just lay out the steps. I'll be like, so basically anybody can come in and get a partial highlight and a tone and cut and leave for about 150. That's totally fine. If you're wanting something that's super, super different from what you have, it's going to take more than just the obvious steps. It's going to be a lot more work, and I just let them know that the trends a few years ago were much easier to execute than the trends today. Like, marbles in in everybody's kitchen. I don't have a marble countertop. I can't afford one right now. So if you have champagne taste on a beer budget, I'll work with you and we can partial highlight you so you get a little, a little bit of that kind of feel, you know? But it's not, you really don't want to be shortchanging yourself or the artistry because the amount of like experience that's required to do a good balayage, I don't think a lot of people really understand. And so, I mean, it took me a while to be confident enough to offer that service on the books because I had seen some things. I had messed some people up. We all are learning, you know, all the time. But um, yeah, just really reinforcing that their desire is what's driving the ticket price and because it requires so much of your time and product. I like, uh, how, you, I like how you word that, too, you. how you explain that. When I was in high school and I was thinking about going to beauty school, it, the style at the time was two colors. It was blonde on top and almost black on the bottom. And I never did that, thank God. <laughs> but anybody could do that. That's a basic block color. If somebody brings me something like that, I'll be like, yeah, of course. You know, that's not going to cost much. That's an all-over color with, tw with an extra product charge. So that would be 90 even. But nobody really <coughs> wants that. And so I think, in a way, a lot of stylists, we kind of do ourselves a disservice by undercutting the amount of time and education it takes to do these things confidently and not break and to kind of work off of their high texture. Turn your head a little bit. Oh, perfect. Thank you so much. What we do is we just, if you know the base, like you said, mm -hmm. stuff that you were talking about, and then we just let them 
you know, it's $60 to $80 an hour depending on what we're doing. Yep. So then we don't have to nitpick all the different things that we have to do to them. Uh -huh. you know, we're the specialists, and we will decide what needs to be done based on the pair yep. and how long it's going to take. And so they know when they're walking in, depending upon how long it's going to take, that's how they're going to pay. Yeah, that's a really yeah. good, that's a really good, I, I like that. And for corrective color, I'm the same way. I'm 80 an hour, and I feel like I don't want to charge people that much because at the end of the day, it is going to take as long as it takes. And I want you to buy retail, and I do like my gratuities. I am different than most, but I'm very blessed to be consistently chipped at about 20 to 25 percent of my service rate. So whatever I'm doing, these people are feeling so valued, they're throwing me 50 to 80 dollar tips regularly and still giving me Christmas presents. So I'm not willing to let that go. But I'm bringing them four cups of tea, I'm ordering them, I'm ordering them lunch from somewhere around the area and taking it off the ticket. So these things work and the level of hospitality that I strive to provide, I think also it's, it's so much more of an experience, you're relaxed and I want people to feel like they're in an extension of my home, not in a salon paying for a stranger to do something. Yeah. Which I think can be you know, hard, especially with, depending on the age type or maybe the age gap between you and your client, it can be hard to connect. Um, but I, I think that's all part of what we're doing, is connecting with people and helping them know that we are trying our best for them and for us. Also, never let anybody leave without taking an after picture. That is your insurance as a stylist. So if they go home and they mess something up, or if they go to somebody else, you can say, well, here's how your hair looked when you were in here, and you loved it. So what happened? Did you let Good your cousin idea. do something to you? Yeah, it's, Great idea. Always take it. Yeah. And if they're like, oh, I don't really have time, just be like, oh, girl, well, I spent four hours on this. I need a picture. Like, so nice. Once they so understand nice. the amount of time you put in there. And also, a lot of people, I will say, you know, at the end of their service, hey, if you follow the salon page on Instagram or on Facebook, you're going to see your hair within the next month. Sometimes it takes me a while to watermark things, but stay active, keep checking, and you'll see. And so uh, people like to be featured. People like to be tagged. People like to be made to feel like, you know, they really are the focus of the experience because they are. Uh, but they're much more likely to share that photo with their friends and directly link to your salon if they know to look for it. So that's another thing that works really well for me is just being like, hey, you know, it's, it's just free advertising. They share their photo, their friends and family are like, wait, that's your hair? What? Where? And then they come in. So it's, it's a picture speaks a thousand words. And some people, you know, when you ask somebody, you're like, well, how much did this cost? I always let people know it is different for every person. Don't tell them your price. Have them come in and see me. And and when I book consultations, I generally book them with the time to complete it that day, if I can. Because I don't do just consultations. I have a couple just cuts. I don't do a lot of cuts. So for me, if I'm going to take a 15-minute break to talk to you when I might already have two other people in the chair, I would like to get you done that day and not worry about it. So sometimes people have budgetary concerns, and I have to let them know and break it down. Like, well, I get paid next week. That's fine. We'll get you in. So it just it depends. But um, I would say my average balayage ticket is between 150 and 250 so just for one straight section but if you add a partial that's like another 85 and then I do 20 35 and 70 dollars are the toning increments so it's just 20 dollars if it's less than two ounces if it's two ounces it's 35 and then if it's any more than two ounces it's 70 because I'm then applying an all-over color and I like the a la carte like that for me because like I said nothing is really just one one technique so much of what we see is several techniques so for her bangs I'm actually gonna have you stand up and turn around here I love balayaging bangs. If you do a face framing highlight, maybe somebody that's even scared of going blonde but they want to look really natural, um, I do it two ways. And so I'm going to do hers diagonally today because I just know that's going to be the way that I like. And because she has a side bang, it's going to look really good. So we already have these connected front sections that we're working with. I did a good job of losing all of my clips. <laughs> this front section that we're working with. This connects here. So when people have hair that they, you know, have a, a swoopy part or something like that, I'm gonna hold this up, over direct a little bit. Connect that line. And you don't have to be afraid about getting it that close to the scalp. Um, also, if it does touch the skin, it's fine. Um, you're using a liner that's okay for all of your liners. But uh, maybe wipe it off after a couple minutes. I always use the, um, the aloe stuff that comes I have in the wax room because it's really soothing. So if anybody's like, um, there was bleach on my face. I'm like, oh, hold on, I have some aloe for you. No worries. But these little sections as we connect 
are what's going to make this look like it grew right out of her head, like she had the best summer of her life, <laughs> and it was just Especially out there every day. her hair back, too. It yes. Pretty. And I always ask how many times people pull their hair back, because that determines whether or not you're going to do a full balayage right off the bat, a partial balayage, and then work towards it. Because I think sometimes, you know, when you pull it up, I will do a partial highlight throughout the front, and then balayage the back, because it's faster, it looks more natural, and if you're creative with your foiling placement, it's going to grow out way more blended. And so then they like that they have two techniques that they can put it up some way and have those kind of nice, looser, dimensional parts. So what you did today is a full balayage. Yes, this is a full balayage. Most full balayages I'm saturating a little bit more though. So um, like I showed you on those first sections, because mm -hmm. people, if they're getting a full, they're normally looking for blonde, like fairly blonde. She is already, I mean, I'm just kind of pretending like this is lighter, but she's already been highlighted so much. There really isn't the need to completely saturate. We're just kind of trying to barely lift those bits a little bit more. Make it and yeah, exactly. So she's looking a little funky with the bang section. I'm gonna <laughs> move over here. Honestly, I think she's good. You feel good? Feel wonderful. Feel beautiful. <laughs> okay. Like Woo! All right. If, would anybody like to come and touch and look through or anything? I'm just gonna need to go shower in between. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm so sorry. That's all right. You're here. Condition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You did a great job. Harry, right. great job. Approximately 11:45, and uh, so back here. So take 10 minutes. Thank you. Good job. Of course. I appreciate it. Yeah. No problem. Nancy. Hey, Johnny. Who's next? Yeah, can I share a piece of great news? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, I just got a piece of great news, everybody. Um, after my program, my wife did a little research online. We said there's 328 million people in America. We said we each need 400 active customers to hit six figures in our income. According to my wife's research, there are 766,000 licensed professionals in the beauty industry in the United States of America. If you divide 328 million by 766,000, there are 428 and a half people for each of us. <laughs> Consistent with what I shared earlier, there are enough people. All right. All right, and I charge a thousand dollars for a haircut. <laughs> yeah, you only need four people. You're good. Ha, ha, ha. 